Here we go. Welcome to the fall 2021 cohorts info session. Uh, let me see if my little clicker is working here. Um, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, wrong button. Here we go. We're going backward. I'm Matt Steffel. I'm Andy Rome. And together. And together we are Mandy. Mandy. And so uh, Matt, we do Andy. so much stuff together that people call us Mandy. And we have been called Mandy so many times that someone made us a video that we're going to share with you. Uh, I'm Matt Steffel. I'm Andy Rome. And together, and together we're Mandy. I'm the. <laughs> I think only one person. I'm Andy Rome. And together we're, we're Mandy. Mandy. I'm a co-director of the M School. <laughs> and we're the co-directors of the M School program at Loyola Marymount. All right. Uh, so we'll just get right into it. Why just a little bit of background on kind of how the M School came to be. And fun fact, did you know that there we receive as consumers, as human beings in the United States, uh, at, as little as 5,000 marketing signals every day. And that's brands and logos and word of mouth mentions. And when we look at our spice rack and all the stuff in our fridge, we're seeing 5,000 um, marketing messages on a daily basis, YouTube, Instagram, all these different places. Um, Dude, that's four, a lot of spice. You have a lot that of is spice a, in you. <laughs> that is, that is, that is uh, 400 hours of content are uploaded to YouTube every minute. I just want to pause. There's 40 hours in a work week and there's 400 hours of content uploaded every minute. Who cares? Why do I say that? Just means that there is so much content out there that people are not waiting for your ads or your clients ads, right? Or your clients messages, or your clients, um, uh, influencers, right? There's lots of great content that we're competing against. To make matters worse, Microsoft did a study a couple years ago and they figured out that the average American's attention span was eight seconds, right? Which is kind of a bummer. The interesting thing was is that number has been falling over time as we've, we've gotten more custom to bite-sized content. It used to be like 12 seconds, we're down to eight seconds. The really bad news is that the a goldfish's attention span is nine seconds. Um, and then also it's insanely complex when it's the marketing ecosystem from marketer to, um, to where those eyeballs are in terms of where those messages are put in the New York Times or on Google is that there's all these players in the middle who are helping to broker um, the targeting and the auction-based ecosystem is that we need specialists today to help operate this ecosystem. Turning it to Professor Rome. Oh, is that me? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I, have a, I have a four second attention span. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. So a good, the a good joke. Short, short story <laughs> is when I came to LMU back in 2011 from the Midwest page, uh, from actually from the East Coast, Boston, we um, connected with an agency or a consortium of advertising agencies in LA called Think LA. And Think LA came to LMU with a problem. And that is that the people that they would hire from schools like LMU, USC, UCLA, Pepperdine, you know, um, these kids weren't really, the students, the, the graduates weren't prepared to really uh, make it make a difference in the world of advertising. So these these students would get hired, they worked for six months, the agency would train them, and then they'd go on to somewhere else. So I think LA came to LME with a problem, and that is that there was a talent shortage in the branding and advertising industry, and they wanted to work with us to help solve that. From that point on, the M School was born. And simply put, our mission is to create a very transformative specialized program that helps immerse our students in the world, the new world, the fast changing world of integrated marketing communications, uh, because today things change by the second. Um, if you're working on Facebook or Google, algorithms change, the way um, companies use digital marketing platforms changes. So the M School simply put is, is a program, a two year program for LMU undergraduates that help uh, help our students keep pace and what we'd like to say um, become future proof 
and real world ready when they graduate. Who doesn't want to be future proof and real world ready? Um, some of our M school graduates who just graduated uh, last semester in spring, as you can imagine, they graduated into a not so amazing job market. And so what did they do? They didn't try to go find a job. They started their own agency and we were one of their first um, clients and they made us a video. So here we go. The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do. I don't even have any good skills. You gotta work a little so you can ball a lot. All right. Fun fact about yeah. that video is uh, we already got in trouble by University Marcom and have been asked to stop playing it, but we won't. Um, so one of the things that is makes you future proof and real world ready is what we call the four C's, which is creativity, collaboration, communication and critical thinking. And so here's the challenge is that for the same reason that Think LA approached LMU, to form this program because the industry is changing so quickly and it's hard to educate people appropriately is that it's happening now. And so the minute you graduate, the algorithms change, the platforms change, the marketing methods change. And so what we believe to be true and have seen to be true is that if we train you in the world of advertising, branding and marketing, mm -hmm. but to really solidify creativity, your ability to create and think originally, the ability to collaborate with one another, the ability to communicate both inner group and externally with external audiences and to think critically and a problem solve. We think these are the things that are gonna make you robot proof. And I'm here to tell you the robots are coming and they want your job. And if you practice the four C's, creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, you are going to beat the robots. So quick, uh, quick side point, Matt and Noriko and I are working on a paper about those four C's. So. Noriko and Matt, what do we call those four C's? Meta skills. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. They failed. Sorry. They failed that time. <laughs> I failed that quiz. But the point is that, you know, in school, you're going to learn technical skills. You're going to learn Excel and you're going to learn how to maybe use Photoshop and how to create, you know, a flyer. But we think these meta skills, these higher level skills are going to better, even better prepare you for the future. So again, that's why we, we base everything we do in the M school around those four C's. Awesome. Sorry, I will forever remember meta skills. Meta how many skills. people are in this? How many people <laughs> did I just fail in front of? Um, you know, one of the things, so M school has been around since 2011, 2012, and over the last coming up on 10 years, as a matter of fact, you all might be part of our 10 year, 10 year anniversary. So that'll be exciting. So we'll do something for that. Um, but one of the things is we've caught the attention of the local creative marketing business community. And they, so the thing that this, the M school secret sauce is that our, our curriculum is both developed and taught by working industry professionals. Um, and those professionals work in our local community and the local uh, creative marketing, advertising, branding community in Los Angeles and now beyond, especially as we've gone more remote is the secret sauce is that we is that they create our content and teach our content that's how you stay fresh and real world ready the other byproduct of that is that we form relationships with people and then they help get us jobs and so it creates a nice little um ecosystem like a clownfish and an, and an anemone that's hard to say well put professor Rome. so we work with as, as matt said we work with a ton of companies and these are companies we started working with way back in 2012 and 2013. So we're not going to go over every single one of these um, agencies, brands and companies, but you'd probably recognize some like Electronic Arts, Facebook, uh, 
Creative Artists Agency, Google, small little company that helps us search for things, Red Bull uh, to keep us energized, Taco Bell. So the exciting thing is that where we're situated in a physical location in Silicon Beach or Playa Vista helps give us that proximity and the ability to form really strong partnerships with every one of these companies and many, many more. So you're gonna learn from people from Tom's, you're gonna to learn from people from Mattel, you're gonna learn from people from some of the best agencies in the world, whether we're virtual or whether we're on campus, we still bring to bear the talent that these industry leaders and experts um, bring to the party. Speaking of talent, did we introduce Noriko? Uh, I don't know. Spe I would say speaking of parties. Speaking of parties. Um, so, uh, you, you know, you met Mandy, but the, the really the key engine, the engine that drives the M school ship is uh, Ms. Noriko Ward. And Noriko comes to us from uh, a fascinating series of, of both educational and, and, and professional experiences. She has an MBA from perhaps the best business school in the world, Kellogg at North, Northwestern. Uh, she's worked at Mattel, she's worked at star, startups. So uh, everyone say hi to Noriko, our program navigator. Hi, Noriko. Noriko is very, very, very helpful for questions around who do I contact? Which classes should I get? Um, she helps just kind of keep the, uh, she's the oil in the machine and keeps everything running smoothly. And we're so lucky to have her. Yep. So. She's the peanut butter on the PB and J. Welcome. Yeah. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of talent. Um, we I was going to say speaking two, of peanut butter. Okay. Speaking of sorry, peanut butter, we have two of our um, amazing M schoolers, their seniors um, joining us today. And so just a little bit of a, a background. There are two tracks in the M school and you'll learn about that just in a few slides. There's the strategy track and then there's the content creation track. So we've invited um, M school student Aaron Carson in the strategy track and M school student Ben Zazara in our content creation track to talk to you for a few minutes about their experiences with M school so far. So again, Aaron and Ben are seniors. Uh, they've been with the program now they're on their second year. So Aaron, could we start with you and could you share your thoughts on, um, on the M school, what you've learned, um, just, you know, what you think of it so far? Yeah, totally. Um, I guess, I don't know where to start. Um, I started, I found out about the M school because Stemple actually taught my first marketing class at LMU. So he was my professor then and it got me really interested in the program. I like love the way that he taught the class and kind of led me into the whole curriculum of the style of the M school overall. I'm in the strategy track. So um, I've learned so far I'm in now, yeah, my second year of it. So I've taken three different classes and I've worked on three very different things. So for the first semester, we worked on a development project of our own and we created like a dog pairing app. And then last semester we worked on a project with Beyond Meat, um, the like fake meat, burger company and we did a huge project with that and then I also worked on a um, growth marketing realm with a student's business called Peachy King Swim. She's actually another LMU student and actually one of my friends and I worked on a project with her. Um, in terms of my experience, it's been really cool. I've actually landed a couple jobs because of my experience in the M school. I um, worked at Tom's for the past um, 10 months and my experience and like being a part of a program like the M school was a huge selling point of why they would hire a student um, at this time. And I've used a lot of the decks and things that I've created for the school to prompt my applications. And I am actually currently working for an M school alum in my current job. So it kind of leads you down a lot of paths of ways that classes don't normally because you just get the chance to like actually work on things and actually have real world experience that you can bring to jobs that you couldn't say if you were just reading and taking notes from a textbook. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really valuable and I think it really challenges you to like think more, less like a student and more like someone who's learning in a job. You learn so much, but it's not necessarily about like the tests or quizzes or that sort of thing. It's about really stretching and finding your skills and your skill set and like what you can bring to the real world, which I think is the biggest part of it. Perfect. Sweet. Thanks, Aaron. 
Mr. Ben. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm Ben. I'm in the creation track. Um, Aaron kind of said it all. Um, I don't want to go too long just because I think she sort of covered like a lot of the same things that I felt. But I joined, I'm a photo major um, with an art history minor. And so I wasn't ever really into marketing. And if you're in a like an art major, you kind of go into it like, where the hell am I going to get a job after school? Like, what am I going to do? And um, my friend, Fran Magdalene, who is like an M school legend, she just graduated last year, actually told me to join. And I'm so glad I did because um, it really teaches you like how to take those skills and use them to better uh, your sort of work after school. Um, the like opportunities we've gotten and like the people we've gotten to speak to has been like so incredible and eye opening. Um, I think it's really, really tough. Like I, it's tried me more than any other thing in college, but it's also given me more than sort of anything else I've done. Um, I know Steffel has uh, been brutal to me handing in some projects, but it's always like, and it's like, oh my God, like that sucks. But then you come out of it like really way better. And it's like, in all of your other classes, people will sort of like tell you what you need to sort of like get the grade. But in here, they will tell you what you need to become better and to actually do well out in the real world. So I think um, it is not for the weak will. It's trying, but God, is it worth it? Because I've gotten so much more out of it than anything else I've done in college. Um, the first semester we did uh, uh, marketing for good, which I actually, we made these hats and sold them to uh, sort of talk about pit bulls and how much they're sort of discriminated against and raise awareness for that and, and donate money to that. Um, and then the next semester I worked with Rome on building my portfolio. Uh, and that was really great. We had some like wonderful people like Levi Brooks and Dennis Lee come in who were like wonderful people in the industry and know so much and, and taught us things like super easily um, and I also worked with Steffel just on how to better sort of strategize and think about how to market those ideas in the portfolio. So, um, yeah, I mean, these guys care so much and it's so clear in everything they do. I mean, I haven't seen anybody transition nearly as well into online schooling as, as these guys have. So you are in good hands if you come in this program. So, yeah. Thanks, Ben. Matt and Rico, should we um, see if there are any questions thus far? take a few seconds and think about uh, questions on what Aaron and what Ben talked about, questions about, uh, we're gonna talk about courses and all the application logistics is just in the next half, but any questions? Yeah, or if students, if anybody uh, participating has a question for, uh, for Ben and Aaron mm -hmm. um, about their experience. Paige, you're good. Yeah, I'm all good. I'll think of one though, and I'll, I'll get back to you. All right, who else can we pick on? I had a quick question actually. I was just wondering what the main difference between the two tracks was. Great question. So what is the main difference between the two tracks? Um, Matt, why don't I take a stab and then you can fill in the blanks. Sure. So the strategy track um, looks at the business side of marketing and advertising and branding. So on the strategy side, you'll learn about planning and research and, and strategy and several functions that take place within consumer brands and agencies that help come up with um, the information and the insights that the creative team uses to create campaigns or advertisements or, or social media content. So then the creative side, the content creation track uh, are the creators and they take they use their business skills and the strategy to actually create really compelling content that makes people, um, you know, maybe shift their attitudes or change behavior or um, just kind of get us to, uh, to act on something. Matt? Yeah, all just sort of, yes, all of those things. I would say strategy determines the who, what, when, and why of marketing, right? And so if you've got an X number of widgets that you need to sell, you have a limited budget, which you always will, and limited time in a, in a competitive set, a competitive environment where people are trying to steal your consumers and best you in pricing is what's your target going to be? What's your core message going to be? Uh, what kind of brand are you going to build in terms of that can be enduring and long lasting? And then you put that into a strategic document and then you hand it to the, to the content creators. The content creators hide that strategy and make compelling content. And so they do the how and where, and they figure out how can I make that idea live in places where we're gonna um, find people 
but also in a way where people are glad to interact with our message. So I would say it's just one kind of simple binary of thinking about it. And content creators make websites and they make apps and they kind of, and so one of the things that I think that we do and we invite is um, if you feel like you're really good at Photoshop, bring that skill. If you feel like you're a great writer, bring that skill. If you feel like you're a great photographer, bring that skill after effects. And so what we try to look for is people, especially on the content creation side, is people who have a wide variety of skills. And then we try to form teams that can make that when they're working together, they can be more than any one individual can be at a time. And if you're wondering where you fit strategy or content creation, we came up with a track finder quiz that we'll uh, show you the link to further on in the, in, in the info session. And you can take this really quick little quiz or test and it helps direct you to which area might you might want to uh, pursue in the M school. Sure. Thank you Any so other, much. That's a great question. Any other questions for Ben, for Aaron? I have a question for Aaron. Um, Aaron, how did you know that strategy was the right path for you? Sorry, I think your question might have cut out my Wi-Fi lights a little bit, but I didn't catch the end of your question. Sorry, I asked, um, how did you know strategy was the right path for you? Um, I think what, how, um, the quiz will help you. I think when I looked at my skill set, I decided on the creative side of things, but I kind of look at myself as a sort of jack of all trades sort of um, position. So I think that when I looked at what I wanted to do in the future, I wouldn't necessarily say that I wanted to pursue a path of only creating content or having that be my strongest skill set. I think I kind of was interested in the whole picture and doing like project management or like looking at everything from start to end. So I think that's how I kind of decided that's what I wanted to do. I kind of looked um, a lot of times like at the jobs and like things that I tasks that I wanted to do and um, kind of honed in on that side. Um, but I also used, um, you can talk to any of us or anyone and like they can kind of help you talk through like your skill sets and like where you think that you want to go and like they'll give you a lot of great advice um, on the path that you think that they think you should take. I think a, a really easy way to think about it is that if you're obsessed with making stuff, go content creation path. If you think about making stuff but don't actually make stuff, you're probably not a natural born content creator, right? I think generally, I don't wanna make it so black and white, but generally the content creators, they kind of make stuff. That's just what they do mm -hmm. um, all day long. And I'm not despair, a Aaron, I'm sure makes stuff all day long. And so then it becomes a matter of like, what kind of skills do you wanna supplement um, in that? But it's more about choosing the content creation pathway. Like if you wanna, if you're a writer and you love to write and you wanna figure out how can I apply that writing skill set to um, you know, to a career in creative marketing, content creation might be a great path for you. Um, and in the application process, let me just say, if you're, if you're totally unsure and you need to flip a coin, you can choose either as part of your application and we'll do, we will do our best to place you in one of the, uh, one of the two tracks. So it's either strategy content creation, or you can choose either if you're like, I really can't make up my mind. Erica. Erica. Is it possible to switch tracks? Like say, if we start in content creation and then figure out that that's not exactly what we wanna do, is it possible to switch to the strategy side? Yes. We, you know, we, we need, we have capacity, uh, I guess guidelines in each track. So, what we would hope is that not all content creators decide to become strategists. That would be almost impossible. Um, but if it's a one-off, so we can't guarantee it, but if it's kind of like, if it makes sense and if it fits with, with our um, class capacities, then we can try to work that out. Yeah, I, I, would say, I would say it's something that we would try to accommodate. I would, I would not put it as like, if it doesn't work, then I could just switch as an option. I would, I would tr try to say like, you know, there's also just in behavioral psychology, if you pick something and that's the thing that you're just gonna do, you tend to like it more anyway. So when you have an option to switch out, you tend to like it less and that's just kind of the science on that. 
Um, I have a question for Aaron Carson, if I may. Uh, ben talked about, you know, being challenged and sort of having a little bit of a, of a learning curve. What have been some, some of the challenges or difficulties in the M school for you? Um, I would say probably that the M school challenged you in ways that like normal school doesn't. And I think that's the most challenging thing about it is especially in projects that you fall in love with, like, especially when you're working on your own company or a company that you're like super passionate about, it's something you could pursue and spend, you want, would want to spend all your time doing it. And it's just balancing that sort of um, thing with like normal school, I think is the hardest part. It's just such a different pathway, but it makes all the difference. You just have to put in the time. And I think a lot of times in other classes or other things, you don't necessarily have to invest your like whole mind or like everything that you're doing to like get the best product. But I think to be the most successful in this program, you want to give everything that you have, whether it's like you're spending time reading articles on writing creative ideas to take to class, or if it's spending the time with your group to come up with the best idea or working on your deck for a presentation for as long as it is till it's perfect, you have the realm to do whatever you want. But I think there becomes challenges with that because it's just like a whole time thing, but I think that'd be the most challenging thing, but also the most rewarding part of it. Sweet. Ben, did you wave a Yeah, hand? if I can add on to that too. I think also just there's a lot of really incredible people in both tracks. And so when you see other people like trying their best and handing in such incredible work like every week, it sort of pushes you to like try much harder. And so when you're not trying that hard, I think it's really obvious. Um, I know like admittedly, like I've brought in not my best work and I almost always get called on it by, <laughs> by Steffel or Rome. And so um, I think like, it's definitely something where, you know, not only is the class uh, challenging in a really great way, but also your peers and your professors all just want to see the best from you. And so it really pushes you to like do the extra 10%. Mm -hmm. I'll add just a thought to that. I think if this is not, if you want to skate by, school for two years your your junior and senior year is your i don't think it's m school is a great program and i think both aaron and ben talked about the community really holds a high standards and holds you accountable because you do a lot of group work and so if you just kind of skate by and do bare minimum um there's some tension in the group and so um if you are just like you've got a lot going on or other things uh we do our best to accommodate lifestyles but it is it's really a, it's as much of a lifestyle and a family as it is just a school program so yeah sorry to so just say one more thing on that i'd say like the whole perk of me like for the m school for me is that it really prepared me to work for a company because the way that you function is like the people in your classes are like your co-workers and your team members and they're taking on different roles and you have a responsibility to show up for your team whether you're, you're pulling your strengths of being a project manager or creator or whatever it is. You're kind of expected to show up. It's not like you're going to skip class or you're not going to do an assignment and like affects everyone because it's like a workspace. So I think that's a super challenging thing to adjust to in a school environment sometimes, but also the most rewarding thing because when, even like in my personal experience, when I walked into an office and had that sort of experience under under my belt it like was such a big perk and people were very surprised that like someone who's in college has already kind of worked in a space that feels like um like a work office or like a work environment so i'd say like that's a really cool but also challenging thing emma i saw your hand thank you um i just wanted to ask how does the m school work in relation to a study abroad program if that's something that you would want to be doing junior senior year yeah great yes. question um, I'll address it and then Matt and Enrico fill in the blanks. Uh, we love study abroad. We think it's really important for all of us, not just our students, but faculty and staff and just people in general to get out and explore the world. So for instance, say when study abroad again becomes a thing, maybe, maybe spring 21 or let's say spring 22. Uh, you're, you're starting fall 21, your junior year, sophomore, your junior fall semester, spring 22 you decide to go study abroad you would make up those two courses those two m school courses that you would miss the next spring so if you go study abroad whether it's fall semester or spring semester you simply make up those classes that you missed um, the next fall or spring semester so we highly encourage study abroad 
Um, and we try to make it as simple as possible to make up those, those classes. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Great questions. Great questions. And, and gold star for Zoom bravery, just for speaking up. Okay. Uh, let's, shall we continue? I sure. Have some, more, some more slides. Ben and Aaron, thank, thank you, you so guys. much. For, um, for being a part of the program and for showing up for, um, for your fellow Lions. I think uh, you're welcome to hang or you can cut out if you got things to do. Yeah, we appreciate you being much. here. Can I Thanks, announce ben. the Thanks, Aaron. thing really quick? Yeah, please. Um, yeah. So I am on ASLU, which is like the student government. Um, and I just got hired as the chief communications officer. I'm hiring mm -hmm. a graphic designer and uh, an assistant. So if you guys are new students, it can be remote looking for a job or want to get sort of into that graphic design thing before uh, you go to the creative track or anything, um, I can drop my email uh, in the chat or my phone number and you can use that. Or if you have any questions about the M school and you want to hear it from like a student like off of the Zoom, if you have anxiety about that stuff, you can totally hang about that. But thank you guys for having us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Guys, guys, it, it rules, seriously. If you have any questions about strategy or anything in relation to what I talked about, you can also give out my information. You can email me or whatever and I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Great, Aaron, Ben, can you guys both drop your email in the, in the chat? Um, and, and like I said, you're welcome to hang and you're welcome to go. And if you go, we're gonna miss you. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was great. One, two years ago, one year two ago, years ago we, yeah. two years ago, we rolled out our, we went from M School 1.0 which was basically a single track, 24 seats, um, which had been basically in operation since 2012. Um, and then we finally rolled out M School 2.0 just about a year ago. And that's when we added the content creation tracks. So we just wanted to share with you a little bit of the thinking behind why content creation. So if you look at the, at the industry, so content creation track is really about developing a portfolio of work. Um, and it's about coming up with ad concepts that um, that are in service of, of commerce. And so if you look locally, we have Art Center, we have Otis, there's an organization called The Bookshop, which is a great supplement, by the way. Um, and these are local, they are great portfolio courses, you take four years of, of art courses, and maybe you have a class or two about creative marketing, but they, they give you nothing about business. There's nothing about business curriculum. Um, and it's just all about pictures and words. Um, and on the other side here is that you've got, there's pretty great strategy management, media and creative undergrad programs. Uh, I'm sorry, graduate programs at UT, BCU, Brand Center, Miami Ad School, uh, but they're all grad focused um, and they're not local. Uh, and they're also, they're two years and they're pretty intensive courses. And what we've been hearing from our industry partners is that our industry partners are looking for a new breed of creative. Um, and, it's a, and it's someone who is really more in this scrappy content creation for the digital world. Um, and, but importantly, someone who has business acumen. And the problem is, is that even over here, the vast majority, I just heard, um, it's, I heard noise in my living room and I'm home alone and it scared the crap out of me. And I realized it's my Roomba um, <laughs> battling with something and it scared the heck out of me. Um, I thought someone was breaking in, my heart's pounding. So um, M School Content Creation Pathway is right in this sweet spot. And so far we've gotten really great feedback from our industry partners. Oops. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. Uh, so Professor Rome talked about uh, the two tracks, content creation track, focusing on creating compelling branded content, pre and post production tools. So before you make content, what the content concept is, how to make actual content, and then how to make that content work in the entire funnel. Professor Romeo, you want to talk about the funnel? Being sure, yeah, we teaching just, full funnel marketing. Yeah, uh, awesome. Um, so for this fall, we developed a new course called Full Funnel Marketing. To be honest, if you asked me two years ago, what was the marketing funnel? I would have like said, I think it's something I have in my kitchen. But the marketing funnel is a really great framework for talk, talking about how we become aware of brands, 
how we become interested in brands and how we purchase brands that we've become aware and interested in. So think about that as a funnel. At the top of the funnel, you have awareness. Like, um, you know, I just bought a new pair of running shoes, Allbirds, and I became aware of them in certain some way. I became more interested in them through other types of content, and then I ended up buying them. So um, yeah, as Matt said, the content creation track is a really nice blend of of creativity, but applying strategy and business uh, frameworks to the to the creation of that strategy or to the creation of that content, which I think helps set M School apart from other more pure art programs because our students have a business and marketing foundation, but they create really amazing, compelling content. Then the strategy track um, is, as Professor Steffel said, uh, focusing on more of the planning, the positioning, the front, front end strategy that helps to drive that creative. Awesome. Um, so here's our curriculum. Professor Rome, can you introduce this? And I have to go, my Roomba is caught on something and it's making a big ruckus. Yeah, you I, go save. Go a save real world Roomba. problem. Okay, I'll be right back. Um, so M School version 2.0 has evolved in I think a really exciting way. Our curriculum now begins with, if you look on the left side of your left side of your screen, you see the new world of branding and advertising. That's what we call our flagship course. That is where we combine both our strategy and content creation tracks into one big course where you actually work on a project called Marketing for Good, applying both strategy as well as creativity uh, to, to solve a problem that you see in your community or um, you know, maybe at the world at large. So the marketing for good and the new world of branding and advertising course is your number one, your first flagship course that you take the fall of your junior semester. Then we split up the track. So for instance, the content creation track will take three unique courses, conceptual brand thinking, production tools and techniques, and the full funnel, um, full funnel marketing course. Those are courses that are specifically geared around the content creation track. And those courses take place the spring semester of your junior year, as well as the fall semester of your senior year. And then you'd end up with a, we bring both those tracks back together for your final course, spring semester of your senior year with what we call the creative marketing studio. Now the, um, the strategy track takes three unique courses called brand planning and strategy, growth hacking or growth marketing and adaptive media and analytics. And just like the three specific content creation courses involve you, involve those, those students in the creative side, the three strategy courses involve our students in the business and strategy side of advertising and branding. So again, we start as one big group with new world of branding and advertising. We split up uh, to take three courses unique to those tracks and then we come back together fall uh, the spring the spring semester of your senior year with creative marketing studio any questions on the curriculum there's a lot of info in this slide and it's pretty simple but just wanted to make sure if there are any questions that we covered them and professor rome there will be a one pager explaining all this that i'll be sending out at the end perfect great awesome okay there's some other cool things that happen as well. You know, I don't know, if, oops, I don't know of any other programs that have two tracks and they actually, cause this is how the real world works, right? You don't just work in your own discipline. You, you work on your discipline uh, with people from other disciplines to make stuff that's even better and to tackle problems and to come up with solutions that are bigger than just um, your discipline or, or your individual self. And so some of the things that we do along the way is for example, in brand planning and strategy, is we write a creative brief and then we brief the students in conceptual brand thinking. Um, and so we even partner along the way to create um, content and do partnerships until you get to that final course. And so lots of opportunities for collaboration and, and to work with other people um, in, in kind of real world, real world ways. Um, Professor Rome talked about our, he had that, that big grid of partners. Those are the partners that help us uh, they hire our students and they help us create curriculum, um, but we're also project based. And so one of the things that's special, and I think uh, this is becoming more popular in general, but there's no better way to learn than by doing. 
And so in all of our courses, strategy, growth marketing, full funnel content creation, it's all project-based where you get a prompt or a brief or a task, and then you work either individually in pairs and trios and teams um, to come up with some sort of solution, solution that you present back. And these are all live clients. And so we worked with the marketing director of Beyond Meet, Aaron talked about that. Uh, we've worked with Tom's Dollar Shave Club, LA County, LA Department of Public Health on opiate um, opioid prevention. So opioid deaths are like this huge silent killer that we're not even aware of. And so we worked with the LA Department of Public Health, so on and so forth. Um, to, we get real briefs from these um, companies that, uh, and they're interested in hearing what we have to say. And so we go back and we do our work and then we present back to our project partners. Yep. And I think one other important point to make about this slide is that we work with, work with both for-profit as well as non-profit companies. So as Matt mentioned, the County of Los Angeles Public Health, um, Wallace Annenberg Pet Space, and Family Promise of the South Bay are all nonprofits that are making their communities safer, better, and just better places to live. Um, so it's, a, it's an important um, blend of both for-profit as well as nonprofits. Because some of you may go nonprofit, some of you may end up in the um, the for profit space. Yeah. Uh, we also have this great thing called Agency M, and uh, Agency M is our student run agency. And Agency M does primarily um, M school marketing, but it's a great so it's volunteer based, and then usually the some juniors will rise to become the Agency M directors, um, and they create our content and they do our posts and they keep. Um, our community informed about things that are going on and they can and it's student run like we we give them the password and then they kind of they do their thing and it's a great chance to again meet other people uh, but also see what it's like to it's great environment because you get real results on the content that you put out so this was some stuff um, that Natalie Godby and and team did last year that was really fun and creative and so uh, they also uh, we've been making some merch and so you know that do whatever you want to do where we do our very best to support you in this initiative as well and we're in some of the so this is a hoodie we actually designed for our graduates last spring but it's just an example of the kind of uh as matt said merchandise that we create and then last year was a banner year because we started selling it on our own little m school merchandise store okay here's a um a slide where you can get in touch. So mschool at lmu.edu if you have general questions. Myself, Professor Rome, our website, m.school, at m.school, there is a lot of info, maybe too much info. Um, also, our IG keeps you in, in, um, informed about things that are coming up and what's going on. We recommend that you that you follow and, and stay in touch that way. I think also in the one sheeter that uh, that Ms. Ward is going to send is some contact info, at least I hope there is. Um, so let's talk about applications and we'll talk a little bit about application strategies. Professor Rome, you want to take us through this? Sure. So let's start at the top. Applications are due this fall on Sunday, November 1st at 11.59 p.m. That's not to say that you can't turn in your application before then, but they're due that the night of Sunday, November 1st. Uh, and the reason we moved up our application from spring semester to fall semester is that uh, now the marketing department is is requiring you to commit to a pathway. Um, so we found it just better logistically to have the application process in the fall. It just helps you plan better. It helps us plan better. Um, again, if you um, when you're when you're applying, you go you apply through the M dot school site. There's a four students section, and then you click down to apply. The application itself is holistic, meaning it's not just we don't look at just one thing. So when we when you apply, you'll submit your resume, a current resume, your GPA, uh, a really brief statement of interest in terms of why are you interested in M school. Uh, perhaps, you know, based upon your interest, this is what you bring to the party, what, which track preference, strategy, or content creation. And then the fun thing is uh, you'll create a, a unique Instagram activation uh, about, again, what you're bringing to the party. So your Instagram activation should be custom made for M school. It should, shouldn't just be a repurposing of your, your current Instagram. And what you're going to talk about is, I don't know, maybe unique skills that you think would 
uh, would really help to, um, to add to the M School cohort. Uh, maybe it's about things you've done, things you want to do. It's really up to you. Your Instagram activation is going to be unique to M School, but also unique to you and the story that you, um, that you want to tell. We can mentioned- I add a point? Sure. Can I add a point here, Professor? One of the things that we look for is that we don't know who's going to apply or how many people are going to apply, and, but what we use as a guiding principle is diverse and complementary, and diverse in every sense of the word, in gender, in ethnicity, but also in skill set and interest, um, and then complementary. And so what we try to find is people who are as different together as, as different from one another as possible, but also we're going to work well because we learn so much from each other when we bring our skill sets to bear. Um, and so the only thing that you can do is be yourself, right? There's no way to gain the system. There was one year we got like 10 dancers. It was a tough year for dancers, right? And so dance is your thing and you're up against 10 other dancers and that's kind of like your main message. But we don't know. We don't know who's going to apply. So our, the absolute best thing you can do is just to like think about what it is that you're into, what your skill sets are, what type of person you are, um, and let us get to know you in that way um, and help us to understand what some of those things are so that we can pick the most diverse and complementary group. Yeah. And in terms of choosing strategy or content creation, uh, we mentioned the track finder quiz and you can find that at m.school, the for students section, and then which track to choose. It's a fun 10 question quiz. Um, and it's really, really valid and credible. So when I take it, I find myself in positions that I should be working in. So use that as one of your, um, your, your guiding, uh, your, um, you know, guidelines for which track to, uh, to choose. You apply your sophomore year. So I think we might have some freshmen, probably the majority of you are sophomores. Uh, sophomore, you apply your sophomore year. Again, this year it's fall semester of your sophomore year and you enter the M school as a junior, your fall semester of your junior year. And as we mentioned, study abroad, we love study abroad, it's great. And um, we've worked the schedule so that if you go study abroad, you just simply make up the courses that you've missed the, uh, the parallel semester the next year. I'll add one That's more. A lot. That's a lot to talk about in one slide. So Matt. It is. I have one other thought, um, is that the reason we used to have take applications in spring, for the following fall semester. We've moved it up a year. And part of the reason for that too is that as a marketing major, and this is something you should just know in general, is that if you're not in the M school, you're gonna take um, customer insight, consumer insight, uh, 3512. If you get into the M school, 3512 is waived, and then you take the, the five custom M school courses. And so if you don't get an M school, you're gonna eventually wanna take 3512. If you don't apply to the M school or choose to not go, um, you'll take 3512, but in any other instance in the M school, um, you'll take 3510, so marketing principles, plus the five M school courses that are for your particular track. So there was so much information on that slide. I'm betting there are at least one or two questions. I have two questions, if that's okay. Please. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so my first one is, do you have to be a marketing major to apply to the M school? Good question. Good question. Do you have to be a marketing major to apply to the M school? Um, so we're going to say it's, it's, we are almost required by the college to primarily accept marketing majors. However, we love it when we can admit a handful of students from other colleges like computer science or psychology or school of film and TV or studio arts. So our main responsibility is to, um, is to admit marketing majors. We do admit um, students from other colleges outside the marketing major, even outside of CBA, which means that for say you're in SFTV, and you enter into M school, you still have to fulfill your SFTV requirements uh, and you would treat the five M school courses as upper class electives. This doesn't mean that you'll graduate with a marketing major as well as a film major. The M school classes you take simply count as uh, five open electives. Does that okay. help? 
And with that, you know, M school courses are not flexible and we don't allow people to move around unless it's a study abroad. Um, and so it's something for, it's, it's individual depending on your major and the workload and the number of courses and just kind of how far along you are or you aren't. Um, and so just know we are somewhat inflexible in terms of moving things around. So you have to figure out if you can accommodate it on your end, both time-wise, workload-wise, and financially. Okay, oh, thank you. It. You bet. Sure. Was that one question? question? Yeah, and then <laughs> my second one was if you do choose to study abroad and then have to take those two classes the next semester, is that... Um, is that seen as something that's pretty hard to do? Is it pretty manageable? Or I guess how common is that? Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, before 2020, of course, study abroad was pretty common. In a typical year, we might have six or eight students go study abroad spring semester. Um, and then all they would have to do is take the two courses they missed the following spring semester, the next spring semester. So it really depends on, I guess, your your course schedule, your workload, but uh, we've seen very little issues come up with our study abroad students. They simply come back, they re-enter the M school curriculum, and then they make up those two courses. I'll just say, if you go spring semester, your junior year, that means your senior semester, spring semester, you'll be taking three M school classes, the creative marketing studio, and then the two courses you missed the previous semester. If you go fall semester of junior or senior year, you end up having to make up um, just one class. Right, easier to go fall. But I think again, to Professor Rome's point, we've been doing this for years and I, I haven't heard much from people where I haven't heard many complaints. So it generally, it seems like a pretty seamless um, way to make up courses. Okay, thank you so much. Cool, yeah. thank you. Other questions? I have a question. Yes, sure. please, Caroline. Caroline. Or Caroline. Oh, you're good. <laughs> um, for the Instagram account that you want us to make, do you want us to like create like a new Instagram with like a story, kind of like um, how we would like do like some type of like account, whether it's like in the marketing field, like how we would market like a product? Or do you want us to like, create an account about like our portfolio of like what we've done what kind of have you seen in the past um hmm. in regards to the instagram account great question matt you want to sure uh, i think it first and foremost is we want to get to know you right and so definitely let us get to know you um we would probably recommend against a where you create an Instagram in service of another business. So not a mock Instagram account, don't do that. But if you have a portfolio of work and you wanna put it up on Instagram and then walk us through it, again, it's like, it's up to you on how can you use the Instagram canvas in a unique and creative way um, in thinking about your audience, Professor Rome, myself, the other people, the panel reviewing the applications. Um, is I would say, if you've got great work that you want to showcase, you should absolutely showcase it on there. But I probably would do more than just like, here's 10 things that I've worked on. Here's my name. Thanks so much. Right? Like add a layer of creativity or interactivity to it. Um, to mm -hmm. just to kind of like capture our attention and, and also to showcase your, your skills and the way that you think we're looking for, like, how do people think, how are people going to behave in a in a group setting, uh, what are their various skill sets? And so does that answer your question? Yes. Um, I'd also add that, say you like to cook or you love to travel. Um, sometimes we get Instagrams of, here's where I've been in the world and, and you know, look at me in Italy, look at me in Spain, or here's my stuff that I, I love to cook. And that's great, but what it doesn't really tell us is, what does this mean for your M school experience? So try whatever you do, try to, as Matt said, try to link it to what skills or passions or, or interests or experiences that can add to the, um, 
to the M to your M school experience as well as the M school your M school cohort. So cooking is great, traveling is great, but we want to know how does that apply to what you would bring to the M school. So maybe I'm a great photographer and I love taking, you know, photos, and so that's that could link to the um, content creation and um, and your passion for photography. Yeah, I we there's always a handful of like I love to travel profiles, and it's like that's great. We love that you love to travel. It's just hard to know, like, well, what's that going to mean for you as a learner in, mm -hmm. in this, like, community that we're trying to build? And so if you love to travel, I think it would be, and that's really your thing, you have to translate that into what's that mean? It means, like, I am scrappy. I know how to get around on a dime. I know how to change direction mm -hmm. when things don't go right. Like, make it an amazing race versus, I don't know if you guys know that show, Amazing Race, but if you love to travel, tell a story about Amazing Race, as opposed to like, I go cool bitch in place with my family, you know? All right, great question. Thank you. Paige, yeah, Paige. I told you I'd come up with a question. You go. Um, I actually have two, so you get a bonus. Um, how many people do you plan on having, I guess, per track? And then when do you guys think, since you changed the application time when do you think people like find out if mm. they got in or not okay great questions great two-part question so i'll take the first we try we look for about 24 per track so 24 is our sweet spot do you know why page because it's I'll an even number well it's a good even number <laughs> one of my favorite numbers um but our m school classroom when we're on campus comfortably holds 24 Plus, if when we go off campus, 24 is a really good number of students to show up on the doorstep of an agency and they're, you know, happy and they invite us in. So 24 approximately. And then you'll find out approximately within a week after your application to allow you time to register for spring. So we timed the application so that it coincides with your, um, your spring registration schedule. I'd like to welcome you all to our M School classroom, which is there it is. Uh, and it's a place that we love, and it's definitely it's four top tables. It's meant for interactivity. We have a recording booth, and we very much plan on on being back. But it has twenty four seats, uh, and and it's good room for some some guests, and uh, and so that's that's yep. the reason. So forty eight students, about total. Paige, did we properly? address your two questions yeah perfect flawless can't Great. complain thank you thanks sweet other questions i think we're bumping up to one o'clock tst um, i have a question yeah margaret uh so i'm a freshman but i'm interested applying in school so do you suggest we preparing prepare the stuff you just mentioned before right now or you suggested to do it like next year? Wait a year. I would wait a year because you're gonna probably have some more material to talk about. Um, even if you apply this fall, it wouldn't even be um, considered until the following fall. So I would definitely wait a year. Okay, thank you. But we appreciate your, um, your ambition yeah. and your, your interest. Keep coming. Okay. Thank you. No problem. 